hi hi everyone all right uh sorry to keep you waiting i fell asleep this afternoon i slept for an hour and that so as a result i lost an hour sorry for the late start but i feel great i feel energetic so i think that will my good energy will make up for the for the um, lack of preparation uh, let's get started Recently, there are signs that Xi Jinping's wife, uh, China's famed singer Peng Liyuan, is getting active politically. People have been talking about Madame Xi's political aspiration for years, and even compare her. People have compared her to Madame Mao, the CCP's only first lady who participated in politics. Now, Xi Jinping is a loyal Maoist, and he shares the same problem that Mao had during the later years of his rule. That is, the number of people he could trust was getting fewer and fewer. And he had to rely, rely on his wife to keep an eye on members of his inner circle. Um, there are signs that she may be following Mao's step. In the past two years, events, claims, rumors about Madame Xi's political um, participation or aspiration has been circulating. I've ign ignored them all because um, not everyone is convinced that those claims were true. However, some recent events made me rethink and I can no longer ignore them. So Xi Jinping may have the same reason and is in the same predicament as Chairman Mao 58 years ago. Let's talk about the recent high profile activities by Madame Xi and why I think her husband desperately needs her politically. So first things first, let's talk about Madame Xi's recent activities. So last week, Xi Jinping toured Hunan from March 18th to 21st, visiting places like Changsha and Changde, China state media prominently reported his wife's solo activities in Hunan. State media, including the CCTV, reported that Ms. Peng Liyuan conducted research and inspection on, uh, on, TB, on TB prevention work in Changsha, and she was accompanied by the director of National Center for TB Control and Prevention. Um, and and also the deputy governor of Hunan province. So here, here we have pictures. Um, now, judging from the timing and the location of her appearance, so she should have accompanied Xi Jinping to Hunan, but carried out activities separately on her own. Now, this is very unusual in the history of CCP leadership. First of all, for domestic trips, the wife of top leaders uh, doesn't accompany them. Secondly, the other than Madame Mao, CCP leaders' wives remain low key, and their activities um, were very, very rarely were reported by state media. So this naturally got on people's um, radar screen. So according to CCTV footage, Peng Liyuan was surrounded by local officials and was portrayed as the central figure in the same way a top official is usually uh, seen on TV. So if you study the camera angle, how the cameras uh, filmed her here, you know, if you look at all these pictures and then compare them to, you know, CCTV's coverage on Xi Jinping, they're the same. First of all, she always stays in the center frame and there's a distance like, you know, she's portrayed as the central figure, right? People, there's a, even this picture, I mean, we've seen so many similar composition in CCTV's coverage of Xi Jinping, right? I mean, the, where people stood, the angle, the color, I mean, she, I mean, everything just, you know, shows her as the central figure. It's exactly the same as how um, they would, you know, portray Xi Jinping. So now those who don't believe that there's any anything special about this report, because uh, Mrs. Xi is a WHO goodwill ambassador for TB and also HIV AIDS. 
maybe she was just doing her job by visiting um, these disease centers. Now, my argument is that it's not quite like that because I compared her participation of other events uh, with that title, the, the WHO Goodwill Ambassador title. Um, I, you know, try to look up other activities that she participated and they were mostly diplomatic or charity events. So in 2015, she attended an AIDS prevention event in South Africa and delivered a speech. But that wasn't her solo event. It was also attended by the First Lady of South Africa and the First Lady of Ghana. And also the uh, the head of, um, I think, the Secretary General of WHO at the time. I think it was a woman. Margaret? Margaret Chan? That's her name? Anyways, so she wasn't alone. And also on World, on World AIDS Day in 2013, she attended an event to light up a red ribbon tree with AIDS children or children with AIDS. Now that, um, but those events were different from the one in Hunan, right? Those were diplomatic or charity events. The one in Hunan, you know, for one thing, she was solo, right? She was alone and she was, she was inspecting uh, the work done by local officials, like an, like, a, like a, a senior leader. So the, in the history of CCP, this is very rare and unusual because, like I said, the wives of CCP leaders don't carry out this type of functions um, and never alone. Um, and also they were not covered. Even if they did, they were not covered by state media. So this, this is why it has sparked speculation that Ms. Pond is stepping into political limelight. Now, in another event that sparked speculation was on January the 24th. Um, let me come back. She, Madame Xi met separately with the First Lady of Uzbekistan, who accompanied her husband on a state visit to China. Um, again, CCP leaders' wife, or wives um, engage in a, diplom a diplomatic ac activity alone with a visiting um, wife is not seen in communist China. Um, actually, the rumors about Madame Xi entering politics have been circulating since 2021. From Sept September to November that year, uh, Peng Liyuan had a series of high-profile activities reported by state media. In October, uh, she, she, it was reported that she sent a congratulatory letter to the founding of the Juilliard School of Music in Tianjin. And in November, during the sixth plenary session of the 19th Party Congress, um, Peng Liyuan, as the UN Special Envoy for the Advancement of Women and Girls Education, granted an interview to uh, to a UN magazine. Now, that interview wasn't special or anything special. What's special is her interview was broadcast during primetime national evening news and was the second spot, was the second spot in um that evening. And so that was very surprising. Um, she was given, basically she was given media attention like a national leader. And the most absur absurd was that in November, the Foreign Affairs Office of the Tianjin Municipal Government organized a, a seminar to study Peng Liyuan's congratulatory letter to the Julia School of Music in Tianjin. And that was just like um, extraordinary. So with all that said, I think you now get an idea of why I can no longer ignore the series of high profile events by Madame Xi and why people speculate that she is uh, stepping into political limelight. Now let's talk about why Xi Jinping needs his wife in politics and not only just needs her, but desperately. The answer is very simple. He doesn't have anyone he can trust. Um, and this the situation um, is actually worse than Chairman Mao had uh, during Cultural Revolution. Uh, but let's, let's talk about Madame Mao and Chairman Mao first. Let's just draw some comparison. Madame Mao 
and Madame Madame Xi are both entertainers, right? Madame Mao was an actress, and Madame Xi is a famed singer, a folk singer. Um, when when the CCP founded the PRC, um, Madame Mao didn't get involved in politics. Uh, or hadn't been involved in politics until the Cultural Revolution. Um, by the way, uh, Mao Zedong, Chairman Mao, and his wife's relationship wasn't good, wasn't a good one. Um, <laughs> he was a sex maniac, and she was a jealous woman. Um, you can imagine the relationship. And um, Actually, Mao had better relations with some of his secretaries or caregivers who played the role of concubines in his later years. I've made videos about Madame Mao and also Madame Xi. I, I made videos about Madame Mao, um, Xi Jinping's relationship with his wife, um, and also Madame Mao's role during the Cultural Revolution. So I asked Chris to post those links in the description so you can watch them later. And uh, they were my earlier videos, which didn't have a lot of views. I thought that those were very interesting. People now ask me to make more videos about Chinese his history. And um, in the early days, I made a lot of videos about Chinese history, but they weren't getting much views. Anyways, maybe things are different now. Um, now, Madame Mao was a very ambitious woman, and Chairman Mao knew this. So he didn't he, he didn't need her help during the early days of his rule, but he didn't prevent her from getting an official title. So after the founding of this the People's Republic of China in 1949, being a formal actress, uh, Madame Mao first worked as the head of the film department in the central propaganda department, or I should say ministry, um, because the film department or the film, the film division within the central propaganda department, uh, it, it's the equivalent of a ministry. So, so that was her first job. And then in 1933, she made a significant contribution to Mao by reforming the performing arts sector and introduced the eight revolutionary productions, Yang Ban Xi, remember? Uh, such as the Peking Opera, the, the Tale of the Red Lanterns, and also uh, the revolutionary ballet, it's called the Red Detachment of Women. However, her most crucial uh, step in politics came in, in early 1966, when Mao launched the Cultural Revolution. Now, let me explain why Mao needed his wife's help at the time. Um, after several political campaigns, many of Mao's former lieutenants and officials had been sacked or sidelined, leaving him with fewer trusted allies. And um, after 1966, his, his most reliable allies at the time were his premier, Zhou Enlai, and his successor, Lin Biao, who was a military general, um, one of the youngest and um, military generals of, of his, you know, among his peers. At this time, Mao needed to cultivate a, a third force that serves as a hedge between Mao and these two men because he feared that if these two men uh, created an alliance, then they're two to one and they could overthrow him. So he felt, even though he relied on these two and they're the only two he, he could trust, but he feared that the other two may, you know, conspire to, to be against him. So he needed a third force that serves as a hedge um, and also a counterbalance between the two men. And that person must be totally loyal to him. And guess what? There's no other one who can play that role better than his own wife. So Jiang Qing uh, or Madame Mao was the perfect person to play that role. She would never oppose Mao because all her glory and honor came from her husband um, or estranged husband. Um, and he, she would never ally with the other two men. Uh, to oppose Mao. So 
With this idea in mind, Mao relied on his wife to launch the Cultural Revolution. So it can be said that without his crazy wife, it would be difficult for Mao to start the Cultural Revolution,、um, which is, in my mind, the craziest political campaign in modern history. So now let's talk about Xi Jinping. Now that you understand why Mao,、uh, even though his relation with his wife was was not a good one, but he had to rely on her uh, uh, for political reasons. Now let's talk about Xi Jinping. Many people say that China is on the brink of a second Cultural Revolution, or China has already started the second Cultural Revolution, and this is one of the reasons why people think Madame Xi has a big role to play in China because Madame Mao started the first Cultural Revolution. Now I'm not saying that Madame Xi will help Xi Jinping launch the Cultural Revolution 2.0. But Xi Jinping is in the same political predicament as Mao 58 years ago. In fact, the importance of Peng Liyuan to Xi Jinping far exceeds that of Jiang Qing to Mao. Right now, Xi Jinping has fewer and fewer people to trust. The situation started a few years ago and is getting much worse, and it's worse than、uh, the predicament Mao had 60,、uh, 58 years ago. Now, after taking down so many officials, his form, this includes his former、um, foreign minister, past and present defense ministers, the past and present commander of the rocket force,、um, and so on and so forth. Right after the, the the mysterious passing of Li Keqiang, his former premier, she is getting lonely, lonelier.、Uh, of the seven members in the Politburo Standing Committee. Do I have a pic? Oh, here we go.、Um, there are only two people he still trusts, and I've circled them. They are Cai Qi and Wang Huning. Cai gains、uh, Xi's trust by blindly following his orders. Cai mechanically, ruthlessly, and faithfully executes every order Xi Jinping gives him, regardless what others say. So even if one billion people oppose his actions, he will still do it as long as she has has asked him, asked him to. Now Wang Huning is similar. He, this man has served three CCP leaders: Jiang Zemin, Hu Jintao, and Xi Jinping. He gains their trust, or he has gained their trust, by being sub subservient and low key. This man is calculating and careful. Uh, never outshining his masters. Now, Wang Huning is Xi Jinping's political makeup artist, responsible for making his ideas and words sound important、uh, and leader-like. Right?、Um, without Wang Huning, she wouldn't feel,、uh, wouldn't be as confident. At the same time, Wang Huning is charged with an important. Task that is, he is, he is the formulator of Taiwan of CCP's Taiwan policy, which is Xi Jinping's top priority. So that's why this man is close to him or is is is、uh, trusted by him. Cai Qi currently holds the most important positions within the party, only after Xi.、Uh, he just became the head of the group. It's、uh, head of the group called. Uh, the the group is called studying the group for studying Xi Jinping's thought. <laughs> so he's the head of the group called the group for studying Xi Jinping Xi Jinping's thought. This position allows Cai Qi to conduct ideological reviews of other members of the Politburo. Additionally, Cai Qi is also the director of the of the general office of the party's central. Committee, which oversees the Central Security Bureau,、uh, responsible for the personal safety of the top leaders. Other members of the Politburo Standing Committee,、uh, like Premier Li Qiang and Ding Xuexiang, are no longer in favor.、Uh, and also, the the head of the People's Congress, Zhao Leji, right. It、has lost his favor during the recent two sessions. Xi Jinping expressed great dis dissatisfaction with with Zhao on stage in front of press 
for a good three minutes lecturing him. So uh, that was and that was unusual. Um, so you see, among the top leaders of of the CCP, there are many people he still trusts. Now this brings up a big problem for him. What if Tsai Chi and Wang Huni Wang Huni conspire against Xi Jinping? So she has the same concern as Mao did 58 years ago, right? Mao worried how the other two men, his premier and his um, uh, military commander, would conspire against him. Xi Jinping has the same worry. Um, so, like Mao, Xi Jinping needs a third party force. To restrain the other two individuals, and this must be done by someone who is very loyal to him. Mao chose his wife, and so does she. <laughs> he needs Madame Xi's help desperately, more than Mao.、Um, so some people may say, "Well, maybe you know, I want to give give you know, I want to look at this issue from from the other." Perspective, you know, there are always people who say, "Well, this is just coincidental. Maybe,、uh, maybe he just likes his wife so much, and he just wants her to to be active, and you know, he wants the 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 Chinese media to to give her publicity." I don't know. I mean, I shouldn't say I don't know. I don't think that's a justification.、Um, In the mind of a communist leader and in a communist country, they don't do publicity without a reason. It's not like, oh, I just think my wife needs to be in the in in the limelight or needs some good publicity, so let's just put her on national TV. I don't think it works like that.、Um, in North Korea, let's take a look at North Korea. Kim Jong Un has officially called his ten-year-old daughter the morning star of Korea. Um, this was she was officially given the title last November, and the girl. And in March this month, the girl was referred to as the guide and pathfinder by North Korean state media. So Kim took the little girl, you know, or has taken the little girl onto podium with him,、um, in front of. Hundreds, if not thousands, of North Korean leaders, and none of them object. From Xi Jinping's perspective, he's like, "Well, my wife is more impressive than a chubby ten-year-old girl. So if Kim can do this, why I cannot even, you know, push my wife to the forefront." You know, if Kim Jong Un can establish his ten-year-old daughter as a future political leader, why I, I, you know, the leader of China, cannot establish my wife, who is so impressive and well liked,、um, as possibly a future leader of China, <laughs> right? That's that's in his mind. I'm not saying <laughs> this is not what I think.、Uh, This is not the idea that I have, but this is in his mind.、Um, so let's let's not talk about. So even though Madame Mao and Madame Xi were both entertainers, they're quite different.、Um, so you may wonder, yeah, what if Madame Xi became the next leader of China? What would she be like? So、um, so I want to I want to tell you that she's different from Madame Mao. When In 1986, when Xi Jinping was still a deputy mayor of Xiamen in Fujian, people in China didn't know him at all, but they all knew his wife Peng Liyuan, who was a celebrity celebrity folk singer and, and a household name. So Madame Xi has been an active, has been famous before her husband, and she has played an important role.、Um, Uh, such as such as such as an advisor to him, Western media reported、uh, recently that the disgraced foreign minister Qin Gang established a rapport with the Xi family, 
after his wife baked some sweets, right? Yuebing, the mooncake for Madame Shi. So the two wives established established good relations, and and、um, and so she promoted Qing Gao.、Um, a China scholar just also disclosed that Madame Shi was the matchmaker for Wang Huning's fourth marriage. Last summer at Beidaihe, Nikkei Asia reported that some party elders gave Xi Jinping a hard time. Other sources. Uh, leaked information about Xi Jinping having a mental breakdown on the beach、um, at Beidaihe, and people were scared of talking to him. And the only person he was,、uh, who 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 he was able to talk to, who was、uh, comforting him,、uh, was his wife. So, in fact, and and also when Xi Jinping first became the leader,、um, his his First two nicknames given by Chinese people were "baozi,"、uh, referring to the fact that he likes to eat steamed buns, and also the man who likes to show off his wife,、um, because he he certainly did. So,、um, but that's not the kind of relationship Mao and and, and Mao had with his wife, and also comparing Madame Mao to Madame Xi. Um, she does have some good qualities that the other woman didn't have.、Um, Peng Liyuan doesn't seem to be an overly ambitious and a jealous woman.、Um, some people say she's a Buddhist practitioner, and is knowing is known for having strongly opposed Xi Jinping's handling of Hong Kong. She was even said to have stopped talking to him for months. For the way he、um, had had, you know, changed Hong Kong. So it's hard to say at this point what impact she will have if she actively participates in the CCP politics.、Um, now, is it likely that Xi Jinping will bring him? I mean, bring her、uh, into his. Uh, core political team. I think he has some challenges. It's not so easy because he must first、uh, let him join the Politburo, right? That's the most important step.、Um, currently, there are twenty-four people in the Politburo, and one is missing because traditionally they usually have twenty-five, and having an even number is hard for them to vote on anything. And also, there was. Always a woman in the Politburo, and there's none. So all 24 are men. So a, a woman is missing in the Politburo, and some believe that that position is reserved for Peng Liyuan.、Um, and Xi Jinping has been trying to make his wife the 25th member. Um, now, Madame Mao officially joined the Politburo at the Ninth Party Congress in. In 1969,、um, it was not so easy for. I mean, with all the power he had, it wasn't easy for Chairman Mao to,、um, you know, to make his wife、uh, a member of the Politburo. So what he did is he made the wife of Lin Biao, his chosen successor, also a Politburo member. So he made two wives, two women, join the Politburo, and that makes that made his. You know,、uh, Madame Mao's、uh, promotion less uh, contentious. Um, not long, not long ago, there was a there was a rumor that one of the reasons that Xi Jinping postponed the convening of the third plenary session of the Twentieth Party Congress was to facilitate Madame Xi's admission into the Politburo. However, this matter requires a lot of groundwork, and so the meeting has been postponed for now until that happens.、Um, that's all I want to say about <laughs> Xi Jinping and and Madame Xi's political future. But before we end, I want to share with you this picture I posted in our community board. I posted this picture last night with a request for people to give me their、uh, 
ideas for a, a for a appropriate caption. And I received so many. I want to share them with you. So I'll, I'll read you some of the ones that, that I picked. So this one said, uh, bruised, battered, but the beauty inside will overcome all. Okay, the next one said, bad Chinese poinsettia quality. <laughs> and um, and then this one said, this one said it's something really funny. He said, it was a hell of a party. Let me sleep. <laughs> one says, help me. Uh, the other one is, only one red CCP rose left. Uh, another one reads, it's not dying, it's evolving. Um, and this one uh, is hilarious. CCP on its last leaf. And, um, you know, what I would wrote, okay, so that's that's all. Um, uh, what I would wrote is I said, there's hope. There's still hope when hope seems all gone. Because this poinsettia has completely weathered away. It has died. But one day I decided to pour some water, you know, to see what happens. So I, I actually, um, uh, you know, watered it, I think before I left for my trip. And when I came back, look what happened. Th this leaf grew. So, uh, for me, the, the caption would be, there's hope when hope seems gone. All right, let me, um, before I take any questions, I want to share with you something uh, a subscriber wrote me today. Someone sent me an email and asked me um, if I would consider set up a Patreon account. And I told him, I said, I have donor box. I said, aren't they the same thing, you know, Patreon and donor box? And he said, yes. But he said, I never, you never mentioned it. He said, I've watched a, over a hundred videos uh, on your channel, but I'm not aware that you have a, a, a donation website because you never mentioned it. And this made me realize how I always forget to say that. And I'll, also, I don't feel comfortable, <laughs> you know, reminding people to donate, to make donations to me. I think that's just a little, a little rude. Um, but at his su suggestion, maybe I should I should mention that. Actually, last Friday I spent a whole day doing my tax, and I got burned out. I think part of the reason why I couldn't do a program on Saturday, or or when I felt so, uh, how to say, ex mentally exhausted, was I think the the tax, <laughs> because I realized that after working so hard for a year. You know, when you deduct all, when you have to take out all the expenses, you realize how little money you made. You know, you start you start to really wonder, you know, what else I could do uh, to <laughs> to you know to make more money. And there's and and I'm not willing, I'm not willing to do affiliate marketing because uh, because you know you're helping promoting those national brands like Target and Walmart. I'm, I'm not, I cannot promote Target and Walmart products to my, to my subscribers here. Come on. I, I mean, this is not something I would do. So, yeah, so that's, that's, uh, that's what happened to me last Friday. But anyways, so I think I want to mention, so if you think you can support me financially, I would, Appreciate it very much. All right. With that said, let's see if people have questions for me. All right. All right. Well, I should first thank the people for um, for their super chat, super chats, super stickers. Oh, here we go. Boy, Kachina, love to lay. Well, thank you. Thank you. All right, good. So I, f I feel great after taking that nap. So I maybe I should do that more often. <laughs> okay, let's see. What do people say? Um, Madame Mao 2.0. Okay, John S. Lay, the Pooh Bear watered it while you were away. <laughs> All right, wow. Really? Okay. 
I never knew you had a donation thing. Patrick H H Hamels. Yes, the link is in the description. I had a donation thing. See, this is what people are telling me. They've watched over a hundred of my videos without knowing that I have a donation link. Yes, I do. It's in the description. <laughs> Asking for money is tough. Yes, it is. Um, and I don't want to create, you know, I mean, for those of you who have the means uh, and want to support me, you know, do that. I, I mean, uh, I don't, I don't want to bring any, uh, I, I don't want to make you feel like you're obligated to. So, uh, okay. Uh, someone said, Lay is absolutely gorgeous. Okay. I think that's, that's what, uh, what a nap has done to me. Uh, I should do that more often. Okay. Moonwalker. What would the CCP do in a second cultural revolution? They already destroyed Chinese artifacts the first time and they can't hide mass killings given today's internet. Isn't it too much risk for them? They can help. Um, uh, people say the second cultural revolution has already started because the trademark of cultural revolution, other than destroying uh, Chinese relics and artifacts, is mass uh, manipulation, mass movement, or manipulation of mass, um, the masses' mind, right? The the mass opinion, manipulation of mass opinion. And it has already happened now. If you look at the, the, the richest man in China, who is the, the, the king of spring water, Nongfu Shanzhuang, right? That brand, the, the, the water, the bottled water brand. There were just so much online bullying of him and his brand by the little pinks or, or anyone who, who, um, one appear patriotic. They were just, you know, slaughtering. I mean, onslaught, slaughtering his brand and his his name, and people boycotted his brand. You know, stop. Uh, retailers refused to carry his product for what? For 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 appearing to be pro Japanese culture. Uh, yeah, I think that was his crime. So when you see these irrational mass behavior, when you see the mass being mobilized to attack someone for the most ridiculous reason, that reminds us reminds us of cultural revolution. That's the number one trademark of cultural revolution, and it's happening in today's China. Um, in terms of destroying artifacts, it's already all destroyed. They have nothing else to destroy. They will have to destroy. Uh, what they have built in the past 20 years. Uh, that's what they would, or they would destroy anything affiliated with, during the first cultural revolution, they destroyed anything traditional, right? Anything associated with traditional Chinese culture. So the artifacts, the, the, the relics, the ancient temples, all of those. Now, this, during the second cultural revolution, they will destroy anything that's linked to the West. So if you are associated with the, the Americans, you're associated with the Japanese, well, you know, that will become your crime. So they would destroy, in terms of physical establishment, like physical structures that somehow uh, is linked to the West, right? The enemies, the Japanese or the Americans, they would destroy those, uh, not the ancient temples anymore. So that's what this, what, that's the difference between the second and the first cultural revolution. Omar Abdullah, you are totally entitled to monetary rewards for the good work you do. No guilt. Okay. No guilt. All right. Thank you. Um, Uh, let's see, DB, I get the sense young adults are rebelling too passively, such as white paper, laying flat, refusing to marry. Do you think this passiveness can actually lead to effective changes? I think, I think it will. Um, because people are, I think people are testing and experimenting with different ways, safe ways to 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 rebel 
I mean, I mean, the cost is is severe. I mean, people don't want to lose their livelihood or their future, right? They don't want to. So the people, I think, the young people. I mean, not just the young people. Everyone who think differently, who want to hope for the better, are trying to gather ideas and experimenting ways to 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 do this. Sometimes they use. CCP's official narratives to do that.、Um, yeah, Martin, happy to help. Lay. My question is about the Middle East. What do you think about the current situation and China, Russia, Iran? I think, as you've said many times, CCP is happy to spread chaos and misery. Keep up the good work. I think that's certainly true. I mean, look at the look at the world. I, look at the effort. The West has put in to counter CCP influence, inf、uh, infiltration, the amount of online cyber attacks, right on on the West.、Um, but if you really look at all those efforts that's ongoing, you wonder why they didn't sanction China during the Russia Ukraine war. I mean, we know China has been supporting Russia. Um, China. You know, North Korea got encouraged to help、uh, help Russia by China. So China is behind Russia, but we didn't sanction China. With all the evidence we have, we didn't sanction China. And look what happened. You know, I mean, the most effective we should have just sanctioned China for you know helping Russia, if we really believe, if we really believe that Russia. Should not be helped. So it's oftentimes the Western policies are self are not effective because they're, on one hand, they make it sound so high sounding, you know, great. On the other hand, they they do something to lessen the effect. I think the somehow the Western culture and the Western politics has this、uh, dual. Um, you know, like Western journalism, you you try to present the same fact from both angles, but sometimes it's the same as you're saying nothing, because in today's world you have to stand for something in order to impress people. You can't be presenting both views, and in the end, people will forget what you say. So w- Western politicians are often are not effective, or, or career politicians, because they want to. They want to support Ukraine. On the other hand, they don't sanction China, who has been so behind Russia. You know why, right?、Um, on the on one hand, they they're. I mean, I mean that's a big topic in itself.、Uh, but I I thank you for the for the for the support、uh, for the donation, and also I agree with what you said. Your question is about Middle East. What do you think about the current situation, Russia, China, Iran?、Um, that's a big topic, and I think I kind of answer that question. I think Iran, Russia are the superficial phenomena, but the driver is China, right? So if we don't focus on the real factor behind all the superficial phenomena, then then our effort. Then we're not effective. All right. All right. Let's see.、Um, let's see. Any other questions? Michael Har- Harrington. I think we should have a show discussing why the U.S. and China are not sanctioning each other. Much more than they are. Yeah, I wanna I wanna talk about that because I'm seeing the you the way the way a lot of people say yes, the West is in in the is on the right track, you know, to to put up the guard and you know, or, or try to put up a shield to to keep China's influence out. But in my mind, that's too costly. It's not. It's too late. You know, when the two economies are so closely intertwined, and you want to, you know, get rid of China's influence,、um, 
it's, it's just too costly. So I'm trying to think if there are other effective ways of doing this. So I'm still thinking about that. All right. That's all for today. Um, I want to keep these sessions short. I understand everyone's time is precious. So I'll see you later this week. Okay. Bye-bye. Thank you. Bye-bye.